In this first of a multi-part series on eye retouching, we're going to talk all about sharpening. Hi there, I'm Michael Volshinovich here from Vibrant Shot. You can find me on Facebook at facebook.com slash vibrantshot and also at vibrantshot.com. So in today's episode, we're going to actually start off a series of videos on retouching eyes. Um, there's a lot of different topics to cover and I think uh, it makes sense to actually just break it apart into individual topic videos as opposed to doing one very long video. So we're going to be talking all about things like, you know, enhancing lashes, fixing eye redness, fixing hairs going through the eye, sharpening the eye, uh, we're going to look at enlarging and changing the shape of eyes, uh, all kinds of different things. So we're going to start things off with a fairly simple concept, which is just sharpening. So we're going to look at a couple of different ways that you can sharpen the eye to make it look best. So we're going to start with this image here. I'm just going to take out this already enhanced layer and we're just going to start off with our basic layer. And as we progress through these videos, we're obviously going to talk about um, all the different topics to make eyes look like this and also make other changes. So the first thing I want to do when I'm sharpening eyes, I tend to want to just create a separate layer that isolates the eyes only. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick my lasso tool over here. We're just going to make a rough selection around the eye. Just give yourself a little bit of extra room, but it doesn't have to be a perfect selection by any means. So once we've got that selection, just go into the quick mask mode by hitting Q. And now we're going to go into filter, blur, Gaussian blur. So for up here, just pick a blur radius that softens out that edge quite dramatically, but obviously it doesn't encroach into the actual eye. So click OK, hit Q again, that takes us out of quick mask mode, and then hit Command or Control J to duplicate just the eyes. So if we look at that, we just got our eyes on a separate layer. So now I find generally, you know, it's, it's kind of counterintuitive. You think that there'd be a very uh, complex way to sharpen eyes, but actually the best way to do it is just using the sharpen tool uh, that's here. So we're going to start with that. Uh, I'm actually, before I do that, I'm going to create two more duplicates of this layer so I can show you some other techniques as well. So I'm going to hit command J twice, and that's just going to create two duplicates for us. Let's just disable those for now, go back into our layer. And generally I work on around 200% when I'm working on eyes. Um, when you're doing the sharpening, 200% is good, but then make sure you back out to 100% just to make sure that it's it's looking good there. Because at 200% it will start to look a little bit grainy, but as long as it's okay at 100%, you're fine. So with the sharpen tool selected, make sure your strength is in and around 15 to 20% and definitely ensure that protect detail is checked because if it's not, uh, the results will be terrible. So with that checked off, all we're going to do is pick a brush size that's, you know, big enough to actually just fill in the area we want to sharpen, but not too big that we lose control. So just something like this is good generally, you know, within the visible part of the iris. So we're going to just go over that maybe two or three times and just kind of check how we're progressing. So as you can see, just doing that has sharpened it quite a bit. And then just kind of dab on the areas where you want some additional sharpening. Again, we're going to do that for the other eye, just going back and forth couple of times and just checking how much of a difference that that made and as you can see it's it's quite different already uh, with very little effort so let's just back it off to a hundred percent and make sure that things are looking good and they are you want to just make sure that you don't get any artifacting in it and it just doesn't look too crunchy so generally don't overdo it uh, the good thing is that because we've isolated the eyes as a separate layer we can always back off that opacity so if we went in here and let's just you know, make it look really crazy here, something like that, which some people do, and I don't think that looks terribly natural. So let's say we found that that's just way too much. We can also just back off our layer here and adjust it until we're happy with it. So I'm just going to go back here. I don't want to have that in there. And so that's uh, essentially the most basic sharpening that you can do. And as you can see, that took almost no time at all. The next thing that we're going to do is, um, and, and generally I'll just use one of these methods. I'll either use the sharpen tool or I'll use um, this high pass that I'm about to show you. So let's just disable this layer over here and we're going to work on this layer one copy. So let's enable that and we're going to filter other high pass and select about 1.5 pixels. Now that's assuming right now that I'm working on a 36 megapixel image. If you were at, let's say 12 megapixels, you'd pick something that is a third of that number. So you'd probably pick half a pixel. But anyways, clicking OK, that's going to apply our high pass for us. And then we're going to blend that with vivid light blend mode. 
Now, if we toggle this on and off, we can see that we have sharpened, obviously, that entire area that we separated out. So if we decide that we don't like a particular area there to be sharpened, we can always add a layer mask, select our brush, and just brush that out. So let me just grab a nice soft brush here, lower our flow down, and we can just kind of blend that so that whatever areas we don't want sharpened aren't actually showing up in there. And generally, you don't really want to sharpen the eyelid or areas like that. So we can just kind of adjust that down so it's not showing there. Now, obviously, it's it's looking pretty crunchy already, I would say, you know, if we go into 200% here, that's just we're starting to get a lot of artifacts showing up in there, and we don't really want that. So let's back off our opacity to around anywhere from 30 to 40%, I find looks best on that. And I think that's pretty decent. So we can toggle the other one, that's where we started off. And then this one here, as you can see, the results are similar, and, and you can kind of uh, control it by going up in opacity and also control the area by uh, masking out certain areas. Now let's look at the third approach, which is actually it doesn't really sharpen the details as much. It's just makes the eye in general pop out. So let's just zoom out. Let's go to about 100% here. With our third layer selected here, we're going to go again into filter other high pass. We're going to pick a radius of around 10. Again, that's at 36 megapixels. If you're at 12, you'll pick somewhere around 3.3, 3.5. Click OK, change your blend mode into soft light and toggle on and off. And as you can see, what it basically does is as opposed to sharpening a lot of the very small details, which it still does, what it really does is it makes the whole eye kind of just pop out and takes away some of the haziness that's going on in there. Basically just created uh, when we took the picture just you know as a result of lens um, uh, lens sharpness and things like that. Now, obviously, again, that's too much. We can pair that down a bit, usually at around 30 to 40% is good. And again, as long as it looks good at 100%, uh, we're good. Now we can uh, actually combine it with any of these existing layers here. So because this one was working more on a large radius, we can still take either of these two which work on a smaller radius. So bringing that one in, or bringing this one in, we can just see what's giving us a result that we like. So I think I'm going to stick with this one here zoom out to again 100% just to make sure it looks good and it does and that's pretty much it as far as sharpening goes now obviously we're going to be dealing with some of the other issues here we had a little bit of redness in the eye which we're going to also fix and we're going to be brightening the eye uh, in our next videos so in part two we're going to be dealing with common problems like hair going through the eyes as well as eliminating redness within the eye so just click on the link that's popping up in the bottom corner here for that video uh, and also make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel to get more video updates and also follow us on Facebook at facebook.com slash vibrant shot. Bye for now.